Hello, welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts. And today we're going to make the pendants that you saw in the thumbnail. And what we're going to be using is we're going to be using these little casting pots that I make out of acetate. And if you want to know how to make these, if you're not sure, then check out the video that I'll link at the end of this video, giving a quick tutorial on how to make these and how versatile they are, because they are really, really useful. So I've made three of these. I've given them a quick spray with release spray because I just think it helps. And as you know, I do tend to use that in all my moulds. I've got some bits of wood here. Uh, one of them I've already painted that I found really just walking the dogs. And they're like old branches that have just fallen off trees and then I bring them home I let them dry out and then I just break them off but you could use any bits of wood really that you've used now I'm going to paint these with the color shift black paint again I will put it in the description for two reasons one I like how it comes out and for two it seals this wood and stops it releasing lots of little tiny bubbles which is a real problem when you're putting wood in resin the other thing I'll be using is these pistachio shells that I filled with resin. Now, I made these quite a while ago and they're really easy. I do it quite a lot with uh, shells and things like that because I think they're so useful and I store them up for when I want them. I think they give a great effect. If you want to know how I do these, I'll also link the video at the end on how to do these. Fairly simple. And I'll also pop the link in the description below. And the last one I'm doing is just a combination of three different coloured resins using mica powder, which is wine red or a, or a deep red, a yellow, goldish yellow and black, because I really love those colours combined. And I have a subscriber as well that always comments on them and she loves these as well. So uh, this is really for Cindy as well, because I know how much she likes these. So the first one I'm going to do is the mixed mica powder one. So I've got everything mixed up and you have to be quite quick with this. So I'm going to put the red, the black and the gold in. Okay, and now I've got that in there, I can actually go a little bit slower. And any bubbles come up in this, don't use a torch. <laughs> Uh, under any circumstances because it what it will do is it will melt the acetate a lighter if you're very careful can be used that's that poured in there now and now all i'm going to do is take a toothpick and this is where i'm really quite capable of messing this up and overworking it and all i'm going to do is i'm going to move this around in there anyway and it will move itself quite a lot i just want a bit of movement in there I'll stop now because if not i will keep doing it because it fascinates me watching the colors move around so the next one i want to do is the pistachio nut one and what i'm going to do for that first is i'm going to put a little bit of resin in the bottom of here first like so Move that all around so it's covering all those edges. Get rid of those bubbles. Oh, it's absolutely chucking it down around here at the moment. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I want to have like this quite large one in the middle. So I'm gonna pop that in the middle like so with my pair of tweezers. I'm gonna push that down so it kind of gets rid of anything that's underneath it, if possible, and stops it floating to the top. And then I'm going to pop in each one roughly where I want it. And then move them about. Can you hear that rain on, my, on the roof? So I'm quite happy with that. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit, a tiny beanie bit of translucent red into some resin and fill that up. And when I say a little bit, I do mean a little bit because I don't want it to be really opaque. I'm just give that a bit of a stir. Again, I will put everything I use in the description below. Okay, and then I might as well get rid of the bubbles in that to start with that I just put in. And I'm going to pour that on top 
very slowly. I don't care if it mixes with that white, that clear that's underneath. I just want it enough to cover up those shells completely. And this one I've done face down. And then the last one are these bits of wood. Pop a bit of clear in it. Pop and push those down. And then I'm just gonna get a bit of gold glitter and carefully put that in there. So I'm just gonna see if I can get some of that off. I don't want, I'm not bothered about getting it all off this side. I do want it off there though. There we go. And then with my gold mica powder mix, I'm gonna pop that on the top. Try and bring it up almost level to this wood. Yep, there we go. And then with the clear that I've got left, I'm just gonna pop that over the top of that as well. And these will blend in together a little bit, but I don't mind about that. That's what I like, as you could see. And I'll give that, make sure that's fully covered. So that's those three done. Cover it up. Let it cure, and then I'll come back and show you how I finish it off to get it looking like the ones in the thumbnails. These have cured now, so we've got the one with the shells in, so let's take that off, and that should come off there fairly easily. There we go. Yep, so that's come off fairly easily now. And what I will do is to dome that. What I've got here is the wooden one. And before I go ahead and dome the front and the back of this, I will actually sand this down to expose all the wood before I dome it. Oh, and I'm loving how that's come out again as well. That looks really, really good. I'm really pleased with that. And again, I will just dome these over. So I'll get on and sand this down. I'm ready now to dome these up and when I dome them I actually like to do it using a pipette because I find that I've got a lot more control. So how I do it is I let the resin just thicken up a little bit, I squeeze the pipette over the middle of where I'm doming and then I just use the edge of the pipette like this to push it to the edge of whatever it is that I'm doming. I just feel it gives me a lot more control and I don't over pour. Well, I don't always over pour. I still do tend to over pour. And then I'll just carry on moving that. And then if I feel that it needs a little bit more, I can add it to the middle and it will just dome out naturally as opposed to having to go around the actual whole thing and put more resin on it. And then once that's cured up, what I will do is I will then turn it over and dome the other side. I've finished these now and what I've done is I've domed both the front and the back of these. I'm really pleased with how they've come out. They look, I think, really nice now they're domed. There's the one with the pistachio shells. And there's the back of the one with the pistachio shells. And there's the one with the pieces of wood in. And there are the pieces of wood. And then from the back, it's a very different looking piece as well. And I love how they've come out. So the next thing to do is make a decision on where you want to actually drill the holes and put these push bales in to finish it off and put a bit of cord on it. 
I feel the most natural place to put this is because they've got a slight drop to them here. So I think the most natural place to put this is about there on this one. And on this one, there. And on this one, and I quite like it that way around. So that's where I'm gonna put this one. And you need to put them quite close to the top as well when you're using these push bows, if you've got something that's thicker than really about three or four mil. So I'm just gonna drill through these and I'm gonna use my trusty Dremel to do that. And then I'll show you how I put the bales in. So they're all nicely drilled through now. And if you want to clean out the dust that gets caught in there, I use these little toothbrushes that you can get online. I use these quite a lot for a lot of different things. And they just poke in there really nicely in that size drill bit and you can clean out the dust. So all you need to do now is open up your bale like so and then pop it into the holes and then push it shut. And then I like to take my jewelry pliers as well and push it a little bit further shut. There we go. And then that will swing nicely on there. And you can put your chain directly through that or you can add a ring on it as well and then put your chain through a piece of, of the ring. But you need to put two of those on because if not, it will hang that way, rather than that way. So let's just finish these off. And these are all simple. Everything I use today, I will put in the description below, links to everything in the description below, so it's easy for you to find. I think the black cord looks nice on that one. And these cords are really cheap and they come already set up. See, I have quite a lot of these. Resin isn't heavy, so it's a nice way to make quite large pendants as well. So there we go, that's those finished. Let me know what you think of them in the comments. Really easy to do. Don't forget, check out my membership. All you have to do is click that join button and it'll give you all the details. You're under no obligation when you click the join button. It just gives you all the details. And a VIP Facebook group to join as well for more contact and support. If you want to buy me a coffee, check out the buy me a coffee link. And don't forget, click on the video that's coming up next. Enjoy your resin. Take care. Bye.